about it. Oh we lost a few people because of the weather. But I don't know why. It's beautiful out there. Right? It was great. <laughs> um, so my name is James Krauss. I'm the uh, artistic director at Ingenuity, and uh, we're uh, the producer of the Mini Maker Fair in London, along with the public library. Um, and tonight, I wanted to I put a call out to, to everyone um, who was involved last year, who thinks they might want to be involved, and kind of get a, a, a mix of people in here that um, either know everything you need to know about a maker fair, along with people who know nothing about it. Uh, so it's great to see actually so, so many new, new faces. Um, so I want to just run through a few things really quickly, and then um, and then kind of turn it right over to like a kind of question and answer kind of uh, uh, period, and then also hopefully tap into some people who have been here uh, last year and have been involved in maker fairs before to kind of answer some of those questions about like, hey, what exactly goes on uh, at, at a maker fair, um, and then what happened like last year, and then um, kind of gather some information in terms of, of, of how things will be uh, planned out for, for this coming year. Um, this is the... Uh, this is the ad and kind of postcard for uh, the Maker Fair. There's some of them up here. Um, and I would love, love, love it if you could share this around with anyone that you know. Um, last year we had about 50 exhibitors. And this year I think that we're, we're really, uh, we, we, we could break 100 exhibitors, which would be great for double the size of it. So that'd be cool. I mentioned Ingenuity Cleveland. If you don't know who Ingenuity is, we're the producers of Ingenuity Fest. And we also do um, some, some workshops throughout the year. It's a, a nonprofit uh, focused on uh, exploring where humanity and technology uh, connect. Um, that's me. And I've got my cards up here too, so feel free to email me with questions. So this is the most boring part of the presentation, the agenda. And everybody sees this and say, holy cow. So then again tonight, I want to go through just some boring details, get those out of the way, um, and then kind of get into what is a maker fair, what is a maker, why are we doing this, what should you do, if you're thinking about what you should do, and then share thoughts and ask questions. Um, like I said, boring details. <laughs> um, the event is on, is on March 29th. Um, the, the event actually starts at 10 a.m. Uh, and runs to 6 p.m. We have load in from 8 a.m. to 10, 10, uh, 10 a.m. Um, there's a loading dock in the back of the library. Um, if you've got big stuff that you're bringing in, you can drive it down there, unload it. We actually had a little car in here, right outside the, 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 the lot. We have volunteers kind of pushing this car around. So we'll move hell in high water to get you in here um, and, and, uh, and, and to help you out. Um, but um, there's a little bit of sort of organization that has to take place. I send out an email, um, and uh, that email will, um, will uh, include a, a link to a Google Doc. Um, that's the way we're going to do it this year. So that way you can go in. You can actually see what you're requesting. Hey, I need a couple of tables. Um, we're we're going to need to come in the loading dock. No, I think I can carry things in uh, from outside. Uh, that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, there's a real sort of distinction between whether or not you're going to use the loading dock or the front door. Um, technically speaking, we're not supposed to load in things through the front door. Um, but at 8 a.m. on a Saturday, there's not a lot of traffic. If it's the kind of situation where you can just jump out of the car, somebody else can park their car, you can bring stuff in, that's great. Otherwise, you'll have to go to the loading dock and do it that way. Um, there'll be parking vouchers. Um, so that'll be another thing that I'll that I kind of need to know from everyone in terms of how many parking vouchers you need. Um, and we, we haven't put a limit on that, but there's a kind of informal limit on like, hey, you know, you can't have 15. <laughs> you know, let's try to winnow that down and start pool a little bit. <laughs> um, and this year I'm working with the library to get food for all the makers that are participating. Um, last year I had a lot of questions about like, hey, where do I get lunch? It's, it is a long day and we want to make sure that um, you know, people can take a break, um, go down and grab some food. So the details on that are, are, uh, are forthcoming. Um, <clears throat> again, the, the floor space, um, last year we had it here uh, in Tech Central and basically um, on the elevator going up, um, uh, I think up to the fifth floor. Um, that worked out really well um, from a navigation perspective because it was almost like a department store. Like, hey, soldering is on three, crafts are on four. Like, it was pretty easy for people to wrap their heads around. Um, the spaces when you get up into the floors above get a little less open. Um, and sometimes that works out really well like if you need something that's sort of, you know, hey, I need a small room because I'm going to be making lots of noise and, um, you know, uh, I, I can't 
be right next to somebody else. That's kind of great, but we're also looking at how we can connect this to the other, uh, the other part of the library. Um, uh, if you don't know the older part of the library, there's some great big rooms in there where you can kind of get more of that sense of, of, of kind of openness and kind of science fair like kind of uh, a vibe that, that I think is really great at the Maker Fair. I think when you, when you walk into a room, you want to be able to see like, hey, there's a 3D printer over there, and there's somebody doing some crazy things with a robot, and like there's all this activity going on. Um, you don't get that so much when you're in the different different levels of the library. So just in terms of like how um, how all the different proposals come in, I'm going to have to look at the whole floor plan and, and, and just kind of figure out where everyone goes. But I do, it's a dialogue back and forth between all of you and, and me so that, you know, um, I'm saying, hey, what do you think about this area over here? Um, so occasionally we'll actually arrange to meet down here to take a look at a space um, if that's uh, an issue. <laughs> All right. Like this. Gotta hurry, hurry this along. Uh, like to give you an example, last year we had a, um, a group called the um, uh, what are they called? The music. Uh, it's like a music group. The, yeah, I was like, yeah. I don't think that's what they call it. Uh, yeah. So they had like all these musical instruments, and it just became apparent, that you know, hey, this is not something that I want just like out right next to another another group because the sound from it is going to be very disturbing. So we worked with them to find a, a corner of the library that, that it was going to work in. Um, so that that kind of conversation is, is a lot of it has to do with like um, either are you going to is what you're doing going to be messy in some way? <laughs> um, in which case we like to keep you off, off the carpeting and is there noise involved or do you need quiet um, or do you want a, a light controlled atmosphere? Um, the other the other big thing is is these questions about like you know a demo. Um, so some people are, uh, will say things like, "Hey, I, I just kind of want to come in and sort of show off this this thing that I made." Um, or uh, in some in some cases, it's like I can really only come in for a few hours and kind of show this off. Is it okay if we do that? Yes, absolutely. Um, a make and take kind of project. So in other words, hey, we want to make something and then have people uh, take it with them. Um, yes, um, a performance, a talk, a class even. We had some classes that ranged from one hour to three hours. Um, and those classes, we handled the registration on that. Um, and they filled up right away. I, I was really kind of doubtful when somebody said, hey, I went on a three hour class um, that's going to involve sewing and soldering and everything. Um, but we worked it out and, um, you know, again, you had groups of 25 people um, coming into those classes. Um, you know, all of it kind of goes, and every 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 combination in between. So it's not the kind of thing where there's like a trade show or a craft fair where it's like, here's your table, here's the time period. But that's that's uh, uh, it's, it's not it's not a structure of staff. Um, a bit about uh, selling. I think that there's a there's a question on the form about like if you're selling as a maker, and um, unbeknownst to me, um, <laughs> it says like, hey, you'll be charged a hundred dollars if you want to sell something here. That's not the case uh, here at all. Um, the um, the way that we approach like selling things uh, on on a, a couple different levels. I'll start with like what a maker fair really is not. It's not really a craft fair. Um, so the primary uh, goal here is not to is not to sell things and, and to have vendors selling things. Um, the primary goal is for people to really understand um, how things are made and to to see how things are, are being made. That said, there's a little bit of financial transaction that sometimes takes place, either to kind of subsidize a project that you're doing. So in other words, if you're doing a make and take project and people are walking away with materials and you want to, you know, earn back, you know, the, the, the cost of that, yeah, we can do that. Um, and then also if there is some financial um, uh, level involved, um, we, we've had a conversation with the library uh, about this and you know, we are able to, um, to have you do that here. But again, like the primary function is, is, is to show how things are made and how things are done. Um, and, and again, that's just kind of a conversation. Um, you'll get an email, confirm details on the Google Doc. Um, if you sign up on, uh, on Maker Fair, uh, on uh, makerfaircleveland.com, um, you'll get an email back. Almost everyone gets in. There's a few exceptions that I'll share with you privately about who didn't get in <laughs> last year. But um, and a very entertaining story. But, um, but for the most part, we're very, very open to um, to, uh, to people being part of the, of the Maker Fair. So it's not a rigorous like judging process. 
Um, but um, uh, we'll send out an email that just basically goes over some of the details, <clears throat> and then you'll get a link back to the Google Doc, and it'll say, you know, hey, tell us the number of chairs you need, the number of tables, um, load in times, um, even just sort of the marketing copy, and I'll sort of pre-fill out some of that stuff because a lot of that you've already done on the, on the application, so I don't want to have you do it again. That way you can look in, and we're literally looking more on the same page, um, and, uh, and there won't be any surprises when, when we get to the, to the day. Um, so I just want to get into the uh, um, <laughs> into into just kind of like the basics of like what a maker fair is, and this is this is something I don't actually know who said this, but um, I said it a couple weeks ago, and someone was like, "That's fantastic," and I took credit for it. No, um, <laughs> if you don't understand how it's made, then you don't truly own it, and that's kind of that, that really gets at the heart of, of what um, what. Uh, the maker movement is about and what being a maker is about. It's not about everything having an Arduino in it or an LED in it. It's not about like that level of, of what's technology and what's not. It's about understanding how things work. And that's that, that's why we're doing what we do. Um, like I said last year, um, this is the group that the music group that I was telling you about. We had hands-on activities, so just um, you know, these kids weren't necessarily learning how a musical instrument works, but they were just they had the opportunity to pick up one and, and play with it. Um, we had interactive uh, types of projects, so you know, projects where you can take things apart, put them back together, not necessarily take it with you. Uh, demonstrations, you know, really just kind of people asking me, hey, how does this work? I, you know, I've been hearing about 3D printing, tell me how it works. Um, uh, education, these are some students from, uh, from the, the case uh, chemistry department uh, working with kids, and, and um, there's, there's, a, there's a real element of, of, of education. Make and take, that's um, <coughs> I alluded to before. People doing projects, uh, working on them, learning how to solder, and then taking something with them. Um, that's that's kind of a real biggie um, here. Obviously, there's sort of a materials cost to some of that, um, but uh, uh, you know the whole make and take type of uh, of, uh, of ethos is a big part of, of a maker fair. And just showing off cool stuff. Um, yeah. This is a, a King Midget car that uh, Mike Beebe uh, brought up. Um, King Midget was a, a car company here in Cleveland. Uh, or I'm sorry, we were in, in, in Ohio, in southern Ohio in the 50s and 60s. They made these tiny little cars. They go about 60 miles an hour and they're just a... Uh, <laughs> and Mike and his dad uh, refurbished these cars and uh, put new engines in them and gave a fantastic presentation on how they, how they do that. Um, and, and I think that's, that's another part of, of what a maker fair is all about. Last year, like I said, we had about 50, 50 plus exhibits. Um, this year we're slated to have 100. Uh, we had over 2,000 visitors uh, last year. And again, that was really without any marketing at all. <laughs> we didn't do much at all, uh, other than word of mouth. That's going to be different this year. Um, we're doing some advertising, and um, I think just getting the word out uh, a lot, uh, a lot sooner and a lot more in depth. Um, we also had uh, nine talks and discussions. Um, these were actually really fantastic. Um, we had them in the auditorium last year, and um, every discussion was really terrific, and the people that were there were really engaged. But we didn't have like large crowds of people, <clears throat> and so I'm thinking about this year instead of doing them in an auditorium like that, either changing the environment of the auditorium and actually having displays in the auditorium while the discussions are going on, or somehow bringing the discussions out of the auditorium. So it's kind of a, a little bit of a thing that we're we're kind of noodling on. These these talks were, um, I think, with a few exceptions, mostly people who were exhibiting already and then uh, we're taking time out to, to, to give a little bit of a talk. Uh, and that's kind of the dynamic that I think is nice because it, it, it just allows people to kind of show off what they do and, and kind of talk about what they do. I also will look at like who's involved and, and sort of figure out, hey, would this make an interesting panel discussion? Or um, you know, does it kind of make sense to have a little bit of a dialogue going on here? Um, if, you, if you have ideas, certainly. certainly is the auditorium in the other building? The yeah, auditorium is right, right through here between these double doors. It's, it's a fantastic space, yeah. but it's fantastically hidden. Uh, <laughs> there's just something about the way that it is. It's like, you know, you, you literally can be sitting looking at it and not know that it's there. Um, so, uh, yeah. Um, what should I do? Um, you know, what kind of project should I do? I think I kind of talked about, you know, there, there's, there's really everything from um, represented here from, from the kind of crafting world to game design, to, 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 to high tech, and kind of everything in between. So it's really, it's, it's a really a very broad uh, kind of category. I talked before about classes, about demonstrations, um, about you know even just setting up a table and just kind of talking and engaging with people. 
people. It, it's, it's, it's a whole lot of fun. Um, I think just generally this question of why, and I'm actually pulling this from another presentation I gave on, on uh, Ingenuity. So a lot of these pictures that you're seeing are from Ingenuity Fest, but I think it still holds. I think this is a really important moment. I mean, it's an important moment for young people. You see this kind of transition between um, people being consumers of technology to being makers of technology. And I don't think that we're necessarily tipped in one direction or the other. I think it's a sort of precarious moment for a lot of young people. You know, going from like just being that touchpad generation where you're just watching things on YouTube to figuring out how to take that thing apart and figure out what's going inside and make your own videos to go on YouTube and make your own YouTube. Um, it's an important moment for Cleveland. Um, I just did a post um, that'll be on um, on uh, the, the Make um, uh, uh, blog. I think it's be posting it tonight. It's really about sort of Cleveland as this maker city. And it's kind of a reaction to the sense that, you know, Cleveland dot 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 better than you think. Um, you know, where it's like, oh, you know, it's kind of cold here and then the food's the food's pretty good and you see it kind of reflected in some of the, the articles. No, this is really truly really a maker city. This is a place that um, has that in, industrial base that is still here. I just had a conversation with a guy from uh, Barth um, Industries. And Barth is um, about 100 years, or I think it's turning 100 years old uh, uh, this week. And uh, this guy Ronnie has been working there since the 60s. And his father worked there and his uncles worked there. And he was talking about his apprenticeship in the tool and die days when they would go into these gigantic presses and kind of <coughs> chisel away at the die and you know, press it through to, you know, to, until, until, it was, uh, until it was finished. And I realized that you know, somebody like him doesn't exist in other cities. You know, he's still working at this company and they're still making things. And that base is really important. And then you have a company like Tiny Circuits and they're, they're making these things here. And so this is a place where things are, are still being made. And then you add on top of that, like, you know, a fantastic cultural uh, base, a fantastic education base. And you have something that's really important. And I believe that this is, um, you know, if we kind of squint and we look ahead toward um, what happened with the PC revolution, I believe that that same thing can happen with the maker movement and it could happen here in Cleveland. Um, it's an important moment for arts and culture, um, I think because we're making that connection with the technology world and, um, and, and evolving in really interesting ways. Um, it's an important, important moment for people who are curious, talented, quirky, and really for everyone. Um, Bob, I love this picture. <laughs> this is Bob McTrusty. This is at, um, we did uh, uh, our main space. Uh, um, um, this was the first time we did this. Um, we, were, we were in conversations with, uh, with, with Make Media um, about doing a mini maker fair here. And we decided, okay, let's just produce our own make space at Ingenuity Fest. Um, and it really brought out a whole different element to, to Ingenuity Fest. And it created moments like these where instead of just sort of looking for finished moments of art, um, we had these moments where we had you know, kids uh, working and learning sort of the basics of, of how technology work, works. And, um, and also we had, you know, things like the crafting kind of movement and these whole other worlds that were out there. Um, just looking ahead a little bit, we're, 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 we're looking at doing um, hack days or hackathons uh, in, in the future um, that uh, the engineers working on producing. I was talking to these guys about uh, doing one with the Cleveland Clinic. Um, and uh, these would really be sort of an opportunity to kind of you know work together on uh, on, on a sort of a you know eight hour, twenty four hour basis, um, and and kind of exploring what kind of uh, uh, new technologies or sort of new solutions can can uh, come toward toward uh, toward issues of so doing a science hack day, doing a, a wellness or medical hack day. Um, there's even uh, talking to the Rock Hall about doing a music hack day. So really kind of an opportunity to sort of develop this community a little bit more, um, you know, and make it not so much about the audience, but more about, you know, all of us working together. Um, and then Ingenuity Fest, uh, coming up, if you haven't been to Ingenuity Fest, we do have a development of it that is the, the make space. Um, and um, that will be in late September, early October. And, um, well, that's all I'll say. Um, so um, if you haven't signed up already, do it. Pass on to your friends. Um, like I said, we, we really were sort of poised to uh, to reach that 100 mark. Um, you can go to Maker Fair Cleveland uh, if you haven't already. Uh, it's a really simple, easy form. Um, you'll get an email just confirming all of the boring stuff that I mentioned before. And um, if you want to do any kind of pre-registered classes, um, you know, like I said, it's something that doesn't seem like it's going to work, but it does work really well. <laughs> so um, we handle again. We do a, the event right registration. We handle all. 
that um, we've got the audience space to go out there and, and make sure that you've got people in, in, in the class itself and then I can also kind of talk to you one-on-one -on -one about what, what I think will work and what, what might not work um, and have a conversation there and then we'll get that confirmation Google spreadsheet where you can go in you know see your, your slot fill it out change it um, just try not to change anyone else's um, and then uh, spread the word you know, uh, like I said, if there's somebody who, uh, if there's a neighbor, I've got a neighbor who works at Rockwell Automation, and, and he's got this automated home brewing system that's just awesome. I'm trying to get him out here to do this. If you've got a neighbor, if you've got, uh, you know, a friend, or if you've got a contact, even people from, from out of town that, that might want to come in, let's, uh, let's really try to make this uh, something fantastic. Um, and that is all I have. Um, <laughs> so what I wanted to do is just open it up to questions right now. Um, and I may, I may kind of tap into some of, of, of people that were here last year to kind of share some stories. <laughs> but, uh, um, are you still accepting applications for the robotics team now that the season is over? I think they might want to come out here and do some community outreach and showcase our last year's robot auto. Yeah, I mean, that, so the question is, are we still accepting the applications? Yes. yes. Absolutely. The, the, the deadline is uh, technically February 28th, but, you know, I mean, there's, there's always, I mean, that makes it easier for us in terms of planning and everything to, to kind of know something's coming in. Um, so that's coming up, that's next week. But, um, you know, like I said, uh, the, the, the form is there online, and, uh, you know, we'd love to have you, have you out there to do things. Uh, the other thing I, I should just add, I'll take a few more questions, but I mean, if you, um, if you also have a suggestion or something, if you were here last year, um, if you, um, I keep thinking to myself, if somebody suggests something, I'm more likely to say, hey, that's a great idea, you should do it. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I think that, that uh, I mean, there's, there's uh, uh, you know, I, I'm not the final authority of what this is, everyone here is, so um, I'll take questions, but also any kind of comments or, or suggestions or, um, yeah, um, can you talk a little bit about the demographics from last year? Is it like what ratio? How young does it skew? Are there lots of families who come? Is it mostly mm -hmm. adults? That kind of thing. Um, it's it's largely families. Um, I wouldn't say. You know, it, um, it's not necessarily like an entirely like kid event. Like it doesn't have that vibe to it. Like so, if you if you come in and you're you're an adult, you don't necessarily feel out of place. Because frankly speaking, a lot of the a lot of the uh, um, a lot of the um, you know, like my five year old was holding a soldering iron. It's not like a natural fit for like you know. Uh, but we like, did do like little kids. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I, you know, I mean, Bob or Mark or Mar um, Margaret. I mean, you guys were here. What what was your your sense of like the the, the, the 